It's time to feel alive again. Extraordinary Lovers Luxury Couples Retreat is designed to ignite your sexuality, communication, and ease with your partner, all while enjoying the bounties of paradise. Join world-class Tantra teachers, Lori Handlers and Michael Gibson as they share how to access new levels of ease, trust, and intimacy. Drink in the gorgeous oceans and beaches of Roatan's most luxury private resort. This small by design retreat will not only make you feel safe to explore with your partner, but also find true depth and connection with other couples in attendance. This retreat includes seven days and six nights of accommodations, all your meals included, and full days of transformational processes and teachings, all situated on a picturesque, clothing optional beach and forest. Book now to reserve your spot in Roatan with us. How would you like to join us in Roatan, Honduras in April of 2021? I am talking to everybody out there and uh, that is in our chat, that's listening via YouTube. And by the way, if you're watching us via YouTube, smash that subscribe button and hit the bell because, uh, yeah, we want to make sure that you can join us there. Um, you can go to ExtraordinaryLovers.com and that will take you right to that space. But we have a very special guest with us. You can already see him on screen coming directly from, uh, from the tropical beauty of, um, what is it? Costa Rica. Costa Rica. <laughs> Did you like forget? I he forgot. He were... <laughs> well, I'm doing two things at once. That's why. Oh, like no, I can't we'll multitask. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't multitask. He's in Costa Rica. He's in Costa Rica, yes. So, um, yeah. So I want to make sure that I got the right thing going here. Chris, can you hear us? Can we hear you? I want to make sure. I can hear you guys just fine. How do I sound? Oh, you sound you great. You sound great. Welcome, okay, welcome to Thank Extraordinary you. Lovers <laughs> Twitch TV. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've seen you. I love your background. Um, you you are living the dream, my brother. Jealous. <laughs> oh my god, absolutely, and I'm so thankful for it. And I'm happy to share from this well. <laughs> yes. Super great. Let's tell a little bit about who Christopher is. Well, yeah, Christopher, I met you um, some time ago, but I knew about you before we met you. We met you in um, Mexico. Mexico. And um, before that, you came on to my uh, podcast that I was doing uh, for the Academy for Men, and we had a great conversation leading up to um, the Tantra Festival in Mexico. And, and the Tantra Festival in Mexico was a really interesting inspirational experience for us but we got a chance to hang out get to know each other a little bit uh we traded uh, you know um ideas and, and things like that and you gave me a copy of your book conscious cock oh you've got it in hand i got it in hand bud <laughs> that's so, the first edition right the, <laughs> yeah i got this cop i got a copy of your book and i read it like i'm i actually read it this is a really really information packed book but in a way that is inspiring people to really just like it's so simple right um it's it's written in a way that's that's i want to say anybody can understand it even a teenager um start, that's yes. good that yes please <laughs> if, if a teenager picks this book up and says um conscious cock what's that about well let's yep. find out and reads it they'll get really really good solid information by the way um, I quote you in one of my programs, um, the Extraordinary Lovers Men's Coaching Program that I have. I quote you in your article, The Nine Things Every Man Should Know About the Clitoris. About the clitoris. <laughs> yes, an article that got me banned, temporarily banned from Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> I know. They got totally banned from Instagram. Yeah. I, they got afraid that what you were talking about was pornographic and what you're talking about is education. <laughs> Sex education. Anatomy and physiology is yeah. what it is. <laughs> oh, my God. So, I remember when that happened, and I was just like, Michael, something happened to Christopher Lovestone. Like, so, like yeah. he, was, he has to now fight for his life and his right to get his, his information out there. Oh, it, it was, yeah, it was harsh. Um, I, I think uh, Amazon had done some things with you as you were doing the book launch. Oh, and yeah, I'm... 
I'm censored on Amazon too. I don't come up in the search results. If you go there and search for conscious cock, oh, nothing's there. That's unbelievable. I you know I can give you the link to get to my book, but, but they ugh. just you know, and why I'm not. Well, I'm teaching about anatomy and physiology. Yeah. Relationship strategies, and then pleasure techniques, for committed long-term relationships. Yeah, yes, all, all the yes, things, all yes. the things that are dangerous to society. So dangerous to society. <laughs> You're such an anarchist, man. Woman. Oh no, we can't have that. <laughs> can't have happy women going around. Oh my goodness. You're so, right, exactly. You're such an anarchist, man. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> keeping it spicy you got to add some flavor to the world man things no can get kidding. bland all too easily you know you got to keep feeding the fire that's right that's we right. do because you know of the tell us a little bit about what you've discovered in um you know in these covid times what are people telling you let's see if we compare notes yeah oh god it's just a broken record you know i i i, I specifically teach long-term relationship success strategies specifically mm -hmm. yeah you know i'm not dating not hookup culture just long-term relationship success and so many people are living in lockdown living in a pressure cooker they don't have any exits they can't get out and go to the office anymore they can't go out and see their friends there's no way to get away from their their spouse their partner their family maybe mom and dad and they're going a little crazy inside right but sure. yeah they still have sexual needs but maybe under the weight of all the stresses on their shoulders, those sexual needs aren't getting met anymore. They're not able to dance the dance steps with their partner that they used to, like the terrain has shifted. So people are hungry to get their sexual needs met, but they're under all this pressure and they're, they're just they're kind of wilting under that weight. Yeah. They don't know how, how do I, how do I like try to feed the fire when there's so much responsibility, so much chaos, so much fear. I'm a, people are afraid of so many things these days. Yes. There's so many things to be afraid of these days. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I, I just hear it all the time. People are like, Oh my God, I need help with my relationship. What do I do? But we, you can't even really post about sex on Facebook. So like, where do you get the resources <laughs> for it? You know, Well, hopefully, hopefully this is going to be one of those resources and, and we're really out to have other people join us on this platform so that we can work together and have multiple shows. Like we're one of the first, I think about sex and happiness bringing extraordinary lovers and things like this, this topic, a safe space for people to come, even family friendly, for people to come and learn about all the possible ways that human beings can be in love and to love each other, sexually, non-sexually, whatever that relating looks like. Um, so that's one of the reasons that we're here. Um, can you tell us a little bit, like that? I, I'm so fascinated by some of the things that I've read uh, in your book. And one of the things is how men can sync up with women and, and actually um, uh, become a, an ally to them rather than yep. create collateral damage and things like that. That's actually something That's right good. out of the book. Yes, yes. Exactly. It, it, it's just epidemic. It's mm. so epidemic that it's cliche that men don't get women. <laughs> I'm just going to make I'm just going to make a generalization here that guys don't understand them. And it's been that way for yep. for eons. Right. If I think about my parents' generation, my grandparents' generation, my great-grandparents' generation, the, the men just didn't understand how women work. Mm -hmm. Think about most of the guys I know today. They just don't get it. Like, they're confused, oftentimes bewildered, feeling like she, they're just getting the runaround. They don't have ground under their feet. They don't know where to stand. They're like, I'm just trying to track you, but you're always changing. Like, they, they're just confused. <laughs> and in that, Chaos. <laughs> Chaos. <laughs> Chaos. <laughs> but the thing is, I will make the statement that I, by and large, do understand how women work. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to systematize it and I can teach some entry level lessons that give a huge benefit to men to understand like, oh, really? That's what's happening? That's how she works? Oh, that's how to interface with her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that hard. Once you have somebody who knows about it, demonstrate it for you. Yeah. Teach you from personal experience. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, there's a whole section in my book, five sections in the book, and one of the sections is understand women. <laughs> like, let me decode it for you. Then you have a chance at success. Yeah. Because if you don't understand, you, you, you're just constantly being thrown off balance. How can you ever be powerful? Yeah. You, know, you have to be grounded. You have to have balance and presence. Then you can, you can be a powerful dance partner. Yeah. Um, so, yes. you know, one of the biggest things that men don't understand they just don't get it 
is what it's like to be a woman and have a menstrual cycle every month. Not that I'm a woman right. and I understand it in my body. No, I don't. But I have a better understanding than most guys do because I've had a deep, uh, rich experience in studying advanced human anatomy and physiology and talking mm. with tons and tons of women and studying uh, female genital biology, et cetera, sexual function, hormones, et cetera. So I just kind of decode it. So if a guy doesn't understand maybe what, if she has a pattern every month, if he, if she, if he doesn't understand what that pattern is and he's always being thrown off by the next step of that pattern as it comes around every month, if he's always being thrown off and he's, he's never really connecting with her where she's at. And then he gets bewildered, I think was the word. Right? <laughs> That's a good word. Um, yeah. He, he's like, I don't understand. Like just yesterday you were, you were maybe this, but now today you're that. I don't get it. So he's bewildered. Then he can get frustrated and then there's separation, et cetera. So what I'm wanting to teach people in COVID men, especially is how to understand what's happening for her so that you can actually connect and create partnership when those changes are happening mm -hmm. create a health ally type relationship yep. rather than being confused and therefore disconnected and maybe you become antagonistic maybe you, fights happen you're definitely not creating a space for fostering intimacy etc right. but if you can shift that and understand the biology understand the chemistry understand the internal emotional experience that comes with things maybe there's a period of anxiety nervousness or sadness or closedness and wanting to go internal kind of shut the world away for a while um if you can understand those things then you can work with them and support her when she's in those places totally exactly yeah. love it yeah love oh my it. god then you become the best thing ever to to the woman Right. You well, yeah, her partner, and, her best friend, you like she feels like you get her. Yeah, oh at a real level, it shifts the terrain. Totally, at a real level, like it's not. It's it's. Um, these are the things that I think are that take you from being just an ordinary guy who's just like I don't get women, whatever. You know, that's ordinary. And then there's what's extraordinary, which is to actually understand what's happening to her body physically, and also understand what's happening to the entire system. Human beings are entire systems with multiple subsystems <laughs> and they all work together mm, right so the hormones yeah. and the right and the emotions and the feelings and all the things that drive those this is so good guys really get a chance to understand how women go through a month when it when it comes to that cycle and they're actually getting an education that they're going to be able to pass on hopefully to their children so it's not just something that stops with their knowledge it can then be passed on Please. It's so good. Like, Please. really, I'm encouraging you. If you're a man and you're hearing this, you want to learn this and you want to pass it on to your sons. Yes. Totally. And then there's the next stage, which is perimenopause. And the Thank next you for stage, it. which That's is what menopause. I'm about right now. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So this is one stage. It's one yeah. phase. Right. Maybe you could say 20, 30 years, but that's all it is. It's just that's one thing. Right. But then what comes next and how do you meet her in the changes that are happening then? Mm. And then after that, yeah. this the great change of menopause. Yeah. So it, the it's redefinition really... of self and role in the world. Who am I? Identity. So yeah. it's so important. It really is so important. I mean, I didn't have anybody understanding all that. I didn't have anybody understanding that when I was going through menopause. And I wasn't understanding it. I didn't have anybody to talk to. So mm. it was like just me by myself in a lot of sweat. Like I'd be sweating and then I'd be freezing and then I'd be sweating and then I'd be freezing. I mean, I remember going oh to a God. business. I remember going to a business meeting downtown in Washington D.C. I was meeting with the board of education for something I was doing, and I was sitting at the meeting and my face was like a fountain, and I was meeting with three men and they, no one said anything, and I said, mm. Mm. "So." Does anyone here notice that my face has been like a fountain since I got to this meeting? And they were like, no, no. And I was like, really? Denial. Yeah, total denial. I was just like, you know, I had a handkerchief. I was going like this, whatever. Oh, God. I went to Chinatown in Washington, D.C., and I bought um, fans yeah. in every color, and they matched every outfit that I had <laughs> when I was consulting. Oh, I love that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot. It was a lot to go through, and it it really um, 
No, I'm going to use that. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, you know, I have really... hand fans. I keep them around. But, you know, in terms of a tool for a guy who's in a relationship with a woman who's, you know, perimenopausal or gone through menopause already. Yeah, bring she's a fan. Having hot flashes is what I'm saying. It's like, have a fan around. Yeah. You know, a nice one. Like, yes. that adds to her outfit. Like, <laughs> work with it. That's right. 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 And, and then men go if she's through... hot, then, like, fan her. I was just doing that to my partner yesterday. She was hot. And I'm just like, let me just get out the fan. She's just in bed feeling, like, tired. And I'm just like, let me just fan you, honey. That's and so that, that sweet. creates connection. Yeah. It's just a so tenderness. Sweet. You know, but you keep doing one tender thing after another and it puts these cornerstones and foundation blocks in your relationship that are really solid. Beautiful. And then men go through andropause and then they start getting hot flashes. And so Michael's going through that, and it's real funny. I have to fan him. I'm having hot flashes yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> so weird, man. Like, what? <laughs> I, I didn't sign up for this. But no one, t I mean, the point is, if we don't talk about all this, then no, then there's no, you know, if we don't notice it and be present to it, then there's no communication about these things. And it's so important because it's their life changes that no one can avoid. Mm. there's this blogging platform for men that's really wildly popular i won't mention the name but <laughs> millions of subscribers and you know i was writing articles for them and i wanted to do the sex and relationship category of articles you know they have one so i'm like great let me write articles about sex education for you and, and you know i was just writing basic ana anatomical sex ed um i wasn't even really focusing on pleasure and 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 they said Oh, no, we can't publish that article of yours. I was talking about the clitoris and the A spot and the G spot, you know, t teaching men about women's. Let me let me just call it plumbing. That's maybe not a nice word to use, but I'm just going to call it that. You know, that's a guy word. How's the plumbing um, work? So, and, and they said, oh, no, you know, we, we can't be explicit. And, and oh, my like, well, goodness. Wait, wait, you wanna, want me to teach sex ed using innuendo and metaphor? <laughs> like, no, no. Like the way you teach surgery is by doing surgery. You know, the way you right. teach a fine skill is by practicing right. it clearly using succinct words. Right. You build a new vocabulary. They're like, no, you can't be explicit. I'm like, well, I can't use the word vagina. <laughs> I can't <laughs> use the word cervix. I can't, I don't know. So part of what we're doing is we're, we're teaching by example here with openness, right? Yes. The words that we're right. using. We're not using innuendo. We're not keeping it in the closet. We're not not talking about it. It's like, no, it's okay. Let's talk about this. Yeah. My grandparents never talked about it. No. Never talked about that. No. Birth was, no, only women ever attended birth. Men were never in there unless it was the doctor. And of course he put her on her back worst position ever with their feet up in stirrups for his right. convenience anyway just like men weren't allowed in like no we don't talk about that the men like my mother like her mother never even told her about menstruation right like many women whose mother never told them about it and then one no. day she's at school wearing all white Yes. Oh, God. And then it happens. And she doesn't know. She doesn't oh, know that women goodness. bleed every month because it's right. not talked about. Like, so then how embarrassing, how horrid, mm. you know? So anyway, thank you for having a TV channel. <laughs> like, <put laughs> yeah. Stuff and out there you. because people are hungry for it and they're not finding it in porn. That's right. Right. And thank you for being a man who actually loves to talk about this and who shares it with other men. I think, I think one of the things <laughs> that's really unique about Chris is that he loves women. And it's obvious. Like, I'm, I'm one of those. I'm, I'm your brother in that sense where I absolutely adore women. I love to learn more about women. Um, it's so important for us to really, as men, I think if we, if we step away from being like the hunter, which is what we do in life, men hunt. We hunt for mm. the career. We hunt for the, all these different things in, in our lives. And we also hunt women. And so I think if we step out of that archetype and step into the archetype called shaman, we can be the shaman for women, and we can also serve them. It's really, really important. Um, and I think you're that kind of guy. Like, you're the kind of guy who is a shaman for women. Like, you're a big fan. Oh, that's interesting. Me I've never too. heard anyone call me that. That's it. <laughs> New. Thank you for offering that. Ding. I'll sit with that. <laughs> I, I definitely consider myself an ally. Yeah. You know, yeah. because I, I've lived for so many years through so many abusive relationships. I don't mean I was in relationship with an abusive person. I mean, my mother was in relationship with an abusive person. So I got to like see her getting hurt over and over and oh. over again and develop that compassion and understanding of what dysfunction is mm -hmm. and say, I want to try to like rewrite the rules that like, how can we make this not happen? 
Um, so I worked in mental health uh, and halfway houses and rehab facilities and uh, women's reproductive health, like family planning, et cetera. Like there's so much that needs to be done for taking these things that we keep in the shadows and bring them into the light and give some yes. support. Yes. Yes. Just being supportive of each other rather than antagonistic. Putting Thank down you, this Carissa. concept that like I've got it all figured out. I don't need to ask for directions. Like screw that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Maybe try and beginner's mind and learn how could I be better? How could I be more helpful? How could I understand you more? Anyway, a- attitude of curiosity. That's love why that. we love you so much. That is why it's too bad we haven't seen you in so long. But we love you because we know this, mm-hmm. and we feel that we felt that from the minute we met, even before we actually met in person. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Well, here's one of the cool features about Twitch is that we have a live chat right now and they're interacting with us. And cool. so I'm wondering okay. if we have any questions right now from the chat for Chris. Um, People maybe, are cheering you in yeah, the chat. Yeah, they're loving it. They're saying, wow, be- really great segment. They're like, love Chris. Um, here's some oh. of the comments that are coming forth. From, from some of the people that are listening. Uh, and by the way, thank you, Carissa. So appreciate you. Big shout out to Chris. She says, awesome segment. Um, you're oh, like the big okay. bro that men never had. That's the truth, right? <laughs> yeah. Totally. <laughs> no, honestly, just to pause there for just a moment. Yeah. And just to talk about like my book. Like I wanted that when I was 13, 14, yes. 15, yes. 17, 18, 19, 20. I couldn't find it. That's why I wrote it. Because there is no like simple step-by-step introductory level user's guide for your penis and sex and understanding women complete with like relationship strategies and communication tools and sex ed. Mm. It doesn't exist in the world. Right. right. Yeah. Give it to your son, give it to your brother, give it to your boyfriend. Like anyway. And they're trying to, they tried to make you in the same category as porn, which is such BS. It's like, you are an educator, my friend. You are, you are somebody who wants to make a difference on this planet. Mm. That's your, I mean, it's clear. It's really clear. So, well, here, here's something that I think I, everybody could really use. And that is a conversation about how do we communicate during this COVID lockdown with each other, especially with the stresses around relationships and, you know, all yep. that stuff. Like, how do we yep. communicate and really create that yum, that uh, spicy? So, you know, it's really helpful to have kind of a script to copy. It helps us to get started. Mm. If anybody's ever had to like do public speaking or speak in front of a class or something like that, you know, knows that it helps to prepare it on paper. Maybe read it a dozen times or a few times before you do it. It helps to get to get you in the flow of what you're trying to say and work up your courage and kind of get more comfortable with it and stuff like that. So, you know, I've developed this little script and I'll just offer it to you guys. You know, oh, customize yeah. it to your heart's content. Great. It's really simple. Find where it really resonates for you and then customize it to put a finer point on that resonance, that spot of real juice for you. But basically, like, let's say uh, you're my partner and we're in COVID lockdown in a tiny little apartment in a city and we can't go out, you know, and days are turning into weeks, weeks are turning into months. We're like, oh, my God, we're going nuts here. (laughs) But you love the person, right? I love you. You're my partner. I love you. And Mm -hmm. I I want success. And I'm feeling like I'm not getting what I want sexually. And I'm frustrated about that. Maybe we had a fight last week. You know, you can kind of like imagine this scenario. We're missing each other, you know, maybe we're antagonistic to each other a little bit, you know. Um, so here's the script. It's it's not exact words. It doesn't really matter the exact words, but just the general feeling of it is mm-hmm. like, I know there's a lot of pressure on us. And I know there's a lot of stresses and a lot of things we can't control. And I know that there's a lot of, of fear and anxiety and um, I need to tell you that even though all that exists, I want to make sure that the fire, the flame of our relationship stays lit, that we don't let these powerful energies snuff it out, Mm. right? Like I don't want to let it go out Mm -hmm. and I don't know exactly how to kindle this fire and make it brighter with all these pressures, but I want to care for it with you i want to do something to foster more intimacy and connection with you in the middle of all the chaos yeah and i'm not exactly sure what that is but like i i'm attracted to you i want you i want to i want to have sex with you like i want there to be heat and magnetism and you know between the two of us still i'm desperate for that inside and i don't know what to do 
but I want to do something. Does that resonate with you at all? Like, do you feel at all like that too? Like, would, would you maybe be interested in having a conversation about how we could meet each other better in the middle of all this stuff that's happening? And then if, okay, so that's like, script that's 1. beautiful. 1. You know, so then, yes. then if they're like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Michael said yes to you. <laughs> then, then there's other things that we can bring onto the table from there. But the first thing is just what we're talking about is we're setting the frame of reference. Like we're pacing the situation mm -hmm. and we're identifying a need that we, I have inside of myself and I'm expressing it in a non, um, in a way that's not requiring you to do anything. Mm. It's not pushy, right? Mm. It's just being honest. It's being vulnerable. It's true, and it opens a gateway to a bigger conversation about, well, yeah, maybe how could we spice things up? And ultimately, that's really the most important thing is the ability to have a space to have that conversation mm. about how Beautiful. you can spice things up in a way that works for both of you. Or we could say to have a conversation about what things are getting in the way of you guys being able to spice things up, right. and can you do anything about those? Right. Can you get childcare so you have a night alone? Can you get out to go to a hotel so you're not in the house with the dirty dishes and the clothes piling up and the neighbors and all the stuff? Like, what can you do? Like, so there's two parts of it, right? Yeah. But first is creating that space to have the dialogue. Yeah. And then I've got tools to give you if you want. There's lots of tools. I'm sure you guys have tools to give also about like ideas for how you could spice things up. Yes. What are we some have romantic loads of ideas? Those. We have yeah, loads of those. Exactly. It's beautiful. This is so good. Yeah, so I, what would work for you? Yeah. And then I, what would work for me? And then is there some overlap, some something that we're both that would work for both of us? And then we're like, okay, let's plan that. Let's work on that. Make See, a space for that. Maybe next week. We know? talked about that earlier. We actually t uh, early on we talked about you know what are some really cool ways to um, add some real spice to your date night? Like if you're going out to if you happen to be going out to um, let's say a, a you know a party of some sort, right? Um, and what Lori and I said was, set it up, plan it, have sex before you go. Like, do oh, that. Yeah. We <laughs> never got the idea. We never were good with the idea of going out and then coming home and trying to have sex. Right. Because like, okay. uh -huh. you're full and drunk and you're oh, something. Yeah. spent. You're, yeah. you're yeah. exhausted. <laughs> you know? Exhausted. We say have it. Totally. <laughs> we say have it first. So we talked about that a little earlier in the show. But it, it really does lend to what you're saying, which is plan it. Plan something. Really get involved in making it special. And talk about how it's been stressful. Like, like release the stuff that's been in the way. Mm, yeah. By the way, when you were talking, I, I'm just going to tell. When you were talking, Michael was grabbing my leg. He was like... <laughs> I want to have this conversation. I was, that's why I said, well, yes, yeah, right? yes. Yeah. It's so easy if you've got a little script of like, oh, that's how I can approach it. That's how I can open the conversation. Because if we don't have the word, the sentence or two or 10, like I was talking a lot, you know, to open the conversation, it's like we sometimes can't get there. Let's just watch Netflix, you know? Yeah. yeah. Kind of like eating dessert first. Clearly somebody who knows me really well. <laughs> Our chat is on fire today. We've got another comment here. It's really great. Um, Carissa says, uh, yeah, totally non-threatening. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, shoot us a quick question. We're, we're, we're going to wrap up here in a few minutes, but shoot us any questions that you have for Chris. We have, um, yeah, just a couple minutes. We do also want to share with you um, also our Roatan. Re oh, by the way, Chris, did you know that Lori and I are doing a retreat in Roatan? That's right next door to you, isn't it? Mm. Honduras, it's Costa a Rica. Short flight. It's just yeah. a it's short a flight. flight. Roatan is an island. It's quicker than well, Honduras. He can't drive there. <laughs> no, thanks. no no thanks I, I just put me on a plane and serve me serve me you know <laughs> take care of me um that's lovely i love that so it's going to be a really nice secluded place yes yeah we're going to feel secluded. safe to like drop into these energies that we never get the space to do right? exactly we got all our armor on we're we're in our business and yeah, doing yeah. all things we got to do every day and it, everything you're talking about is what every single person i think needs and oftentimes what they need is they need to get away from something you know right now we're in this covid time so we're all we're kind of mashed together um and it, it's nice to get out of that environment into a separate environment in a place where you can really just let go 
And, um, and that's what we were thinking. We were thinking, you know what? We needed something like that, something that we can really just be around people. It's like you said, Chris, sometimes people just need someone to model. You know? Oh, yeah. Like, if you can't see it, how can you copy it? Right, exactly. Right. So that's part of why we want to invite you and others to come and join us in Honduras. But um, also because Lori and I really are about creating the community and feeling into what it looks like to be extraordinary lovers in a community. Right. So it's really important. I think people will really love this. Um, I got something that I'm going to share with here, everybody, in a little bit. But and, and I'm not talking about polyamory or anything. I'm talking about, you know, anyone who's in a committed uh, coupledom or thruppledom or whatever your situation is, you're welcome to come. You don't have to just be in a couple. And I'm talking about, you know, a place where people who actually get to do those things that you're talking about as a practice and start to implement that into their lives and see what it looks like when it's done. Like when it's done right in front of your face. It's really important. I never had anything like that, man. Like oh what God, you're right? saying. I read this book. That was the first time I actually got some really like life lessons about, you know, uh, menstruation, women's cycles, how men and women uh, operate, let, the hormonal let systems, me also say, all this other stuff. That, like to learn about your own penis. Yeah. Like mostly when all when you go to junior high school high school uh, sex ed class you learn that yes there's the bladder and the testicles and semen and prostate and there's the plum all you learn is plumbing right right just plumbing you don't learn anything about actual function and pleasure like most guys don't know about their hot spots on their genitalia they don't know that they can actually use a vibrator like women use a vibrator and make themselves come with a vibrator like women come with a vibrator most guys don't know that that's like what you can do that <laughs> yeah, you, can, you can you can use a vibrator and you can make yourself come it's not that hard you just got to know where the spot is right you know so anyway it's like you know there's a map in the book there like guys have never had a, their brother tell them oh yeah there's this spot you need to you need to know about the spot it'll add a lot of pleasure for the rest of your life to know about that spot. Right. And we've got a comment here from Heather. She says, and foreskin is natural. Right. So, yeah. um, so we can get on our soapbox for a moment. You think maybe it's our show. What the hell not? Right. Yeah. We don't believe in circumcision. Yeah. So there's circumcised and then there's intact. A lot of people call it uncircumcised, but guys, I really want to say that there's intact <laughs> and then they're circumcised. And the difference between the two is something like 20,000 nerve endings that get lost. Yeah, we tell people don't do it. Don't do it to your boys. Don't yeah. do it to your male children. Yeah. Um, somebody said they learned about plumbing um, in shop class. That must be the problem. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Who taught you? Right? Come on, spill. <laughs> 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 Who no, is your honestly, shop class you. teacher? I want to give him a hello. <laughs> hell yes. Thank you. No, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe <laughs> not. Yeah. So, yes, Heather says, don't do it. Don't cut. Yes. No, don't cut. If you have young children, it, it, it's, it's, um, it really is genital mutilation. In fact, um, the, I was on a, I was in a salon, uh, online with, um, the director and writer of, um, Circumcised, which is a, 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 a movie that was put out recently on Amazon and we're going to oh, really? have him. Yeah. We're going to have Thanks him on the show about talking it. about okay. this. Yeah. It's really important. Um, it's a really important work. Uh, circumcision uh, or circumcised in the USA. Um, it's really important. Uh -huh. He gives a lot of st statistics. Oh man. Another way we're controlled. Well, yeah. You know, I, just to speak about circumcision for a moment. <clears throat> um, a lot of women may not understand um, the impact of circumcision on their sex life with a man. Mm -hmm. um, intuitively, they might not understand that intuitively, but there's a little demonstration that can communicate it really quickly. If you take your finger and then you take your other finger and you stick it on top of the knuckle and wiggle the, you can do it, oh. Lori, Mike, take the, 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 the skin over your knuckle and wiggle it back and forth. See how it slides over the bone there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Great. Now turn your finger like this, fingertip to fingertip, and try to move back and forth. It doesn't slide very much. Oh yeah. Right. It's mostly friction. Yeah. Of your two fingertips rubbing over each other. It's mostly friction. Well, so even that. This under, is like knuckle. skin slides over the knuckle. Right. 
internal lubrication here, just friction. So like in terms of intercourse, penis and vagina or penis and anus in intercourse, like if you have foreskin, the skin is sliding over the shaft of the penis, lubricating it. There's less friction of the penis sliding against the skin of the vagina. Right. Mm -hmm. right? So it, you know, a lot of women can experience what circum or sex with an, with a circumcised man is having a lot of friction. A lot of yeah. friction, right? And maybe you need a lot of lube to deal with it or stuff, stuff like that. But um, whereas an uncircumcised or, as you say, intact penis has this natural sliding skin on the outside that flows and, and is built in lubricant. Mm. It doesn't even require wetness. So Beautiful. <laughs> Thank, you say it, like, Thank you for it that. Can, it can make sex more pleasurable and intimate because it feels better. It isn't rubbing it the wrong way. You could right. Say. I love that. They rubbed me the wrong way. Just saying, <laughs> a little bit more like relaxing into pleasure. Yes. Because it's more joyous. It's less rubby. Mm. Yeah. Careza says, uh, how do I say that? Careza? Yeah. Uncircumcised Carreza. men are gorgeous in their natural state. I would use the word intact, but uh, that uh, we get the point. And there's nothing wrong or dirty about it. That's right. And, and can you dispel this um, commonly used myth that um, the reason for circumcision is hygienic? Uh, I don't know that it's actually correct that the reason for it is hygienic. Mm -hmm. I think it's a religious thing, right? That got co-opted by Christianity and then into the mainstream medical establishment in North America. Um, yeah, the body I... has it, it, it inside the foreskin on the head of the glands of the penis is mucosa tissue. That's the type of cell it is. It's mucosa cell, and that naturally exfoliates itself. Um, so there's schmegma, which is this little dead skin that comes off. So it's nice to wash it, right? And wash it away. So with modern hygiene, with the fact that we have plumbing and soap and showers, you know, in most people's houses because we're in a developed <laughs> world. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if if if, you, if you're in a, a a pueblo or a tribe that just has uh, uh, shit trenches, you know, latrines, like mm -hmm. you know, that it's a different thing. Like right. If you're dealing with that level of bacteria around you, right, but like exactly. in modern society where we have flush plumbing. Like it's not an issue anymore. People can take baths, you yeah. know? so it's medically unnecessary anymore. And, well, I'm going to be sarcastic here. Off. I'm going to be sarcastic here and just ask the question, you know, how did we survive as a species? <laughs> like if this is so damn necessary um, to, you know, to to mutilate a young boy's penis, it, it makes no sense For, because of the danger of, um, you know, non hygienic. You know, right or whatever right it's a justification that no longer serves or makes sense it may have That's made right. sense at some point exactly what you're describing but yeah. it's it's medically false it's false right it's false so um so if you're uh, uh, gonna have a, a young boy child um or grandchild or grandchild i highly don't encourage do it. you yeah don't do it and don't let them i would do i it. would encourage people pardon me i would encourage people to let the boy make up his own mind mm -hmm. when he comes of age Yep. Right. To not make that decision for him. That's right. That yeah. is easy for a lot of people to swallow. Yeah. It's like, it's oh, right okay, on. I'll, my grandfather made that decision for himself at 13. Mm -hmm. He's decided for himself that he wanted to get a circumcision at age 13 for whatever his reasons were, but it was his decision. That's right. And to me, my body, my decision. Mm. Right on. So, yeah. And right any on. parents who are like on the fence about it, like you, you know, <laughs> let your child make the decision for himself. <laughs> Imagine if, you, if it was for your daughter. <laughs> Flip the script a bit. Exactly. You circumcise exactly. your daughter. Most no. people cringe when you say circumcise a girl. Ugh. They cringe. They go, oh, my God, never. Well, then why are you considering doing it to a boy? Exactly. That's right. You Thank know? you. Thank, Thank you, you for that. Thank Beautiful. you so much for that. Yeah. Listen, guys, we're at the end of our, our show, and um, it has been a lively conversation. Man. I love having you here, Chris. We're going to ask you to come back. Um, really appreciate you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for giving the discount on the book. Um, sure. And we'll go ahead and put that up in the chat again. Uh, yeah, we really had a great time with you. And again, as we close out today, we want to say thank you so much, everyone, for helping us yes. to become Twitch affiliates. This is a big deal for us. This is something that we were really looking forward to. And um, and you made it happen. And so without you, uh, yeah, this wouldn't happen. Couldn't happen. Thank you so much for your support, all your subscriptions. Thank you so much for being here today. We do appreciate you. If you can be in Honduras with us in April 2021, mm -hmm. we want you to come. We're going to 
play a little uh, kind of a promotion at the end of this thing here, and then we're going to uh, stop the stream. But I just want you to know that we really appreciate you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Love Thank you. you so much. What about, are we going to do the drawing now? All right. I'm just oh. going to close. I'm going to tell you one thing. Yeah. I'm just going to give you guys a little a little fun flirt for the holidays. Anybody who's watching the show, you, you can, you can, you can, have a sassy little flirtatious message with your with your lover, your partner, and be like, I want to be the reason that Santa puts you on his naughty list. <laughs> nice. I like I'll that. With that. I want to be the reason Santa puts you on his naughty list. I am there the you reason go. Santa puts you on. <laughs> All the variations of that. Yeah. I love that. Have Thank fun with you it. so much. Thank you so much, Chris. Really appreciate cool, you. Guys. Um, also, you can get Conscious Cock you can go to his website, www.consciouscock.com, and get the book, um, read it, hand it off to a friend, buy a couple copies and send them out. Um, young men, young you men know, need this. 12, 13 yeah. years old, even, it's safe for them. It's really, really good information. It's going to help them. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, let's see. When is today's replay? Sonny wants to know. Oh, the replay goes up almost immediately. And then you can find us on YouTube, especially if you go to YouTube dot extraordinary lovers tv dot com so again that's youtube dot extraordinary lovers tv dot com and um, you'll be able to see the replay this afternoon chris we love you we appreciate you so much man thank you for stopping by and hanging thank out with you. us today, sharing happy your to be wisdom here with you guys today love you happy and happy holidays. happy new year yeah Yay. may 2021 be so much better yeah for all of us <laughs>